be shy Cause I Life won't bring you down too far McCart. Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Stop for a second, Andrew, because people in the fight for taking you know, you spin the camera so we can see what your face looks like. Thank you. No, no, hold it up so we can finally see this guy, <laughs> the guy behind the camera, because we always hear your Scottish voice, yep. but we don't get to see you, well, right? And we don't play boxing unless the God's on his truth. There we go. This is on my t-shirt right? there. But you're the guy for AFL up in Scotland. Yeah, no am. one doesn't get to see you. And I see you traveling all around the world uh, uh, and everything else. How are you finding it at, um, at AFL and how are you find it at MTK Global? I love it. Absolutely love it. I love the sport. Uh, and there's nothing better than just going around the world speaking to guys like yourself, talking boxing. You must like, you enjoy it. You, you've got the, a good gig now. What gig's that? Well, I've seen you at break Am I singing? You're singing at well, you know, a good gig like I'm a singer. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm, really, I'm really grateful um, to be on this ESPN platform now um, alongside because, um, via MTK Global. As you know, I run the foundation for MTK mm -hmm. Global. Um, so, yeah. And also, we're feeding, what is it? One housing project for senior citizens. Uh, of our of our beautiful nation, we're going out. Um, it's World Charity Day on Saturday, um, so I'm down at the one housing. I give. I've been going out there for about four years now to the old people's home. Like I, I do that uh, every other month because of MTK Global Foundation. So yeah, we're going down there. We're bringing all the food. Uh, and yeah, what's it? Um, uh, Bromley to Bombay have uh, donated some food as well. We put some money in and we're going down there so we've got something like 200 mils for Perfect. all the old people so I just to put that one in there so I've got to say thank you to Bromley to Bombay and thank you to MTK Global and thank you for the foundation as well. Well, perfect. That's yeah. a good way to start the interview then. Yeah, yeah. Actually amazing, well done to you and obviously MTK Foundation. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you were at the fights last night. I mean, you had five knockouts out of six fights. I mean, the whole show was great from start to bottom. It wasn't a bad fight. Man, how did you find the show? I found the show. I found the show very, very good. Um, uh, what's the uh, uh, McCory? McCory, yeah. Paddy McCory, yeah. Yeah. Was it Paddy? Pod. His name's Podrick, but we we shot it. It's an Irish name, so we shot it down to Poddy. Okay. Yeah. That guy, to me, though, it was him and also Will. Yeah. Elliot uh, Will, yeah. Yeah. What's his name? Elliot Will. Yeah, because I, um, yeah, they were the standout guys for me, and this is. Uh, and the reason why they were the standout guys for me, not only it wasn't the fact that they caused stoppages uh, or knockouts, it was the manner in which they caused their stoppage mm -hmm. and knockouts. Uh, and Ellie Well should be called Ellie Killer Well. That's what I've renicked it. I've renicked yeah, uh, him. Yeah, that, that's that's, that's, I like that. Right? He he impressed me. But that that potty, I, I had to I had to share that on my Instagram um, because. It was, <laughs> it was like Alex threw back to me like what do you think and I just say wow because I like how he set up his shots uh, even though he's an aggressive fighter uh, he thinks and if you look on him you think he ain't nothing you look on his, his, his body type you think mm, this guy but that guy's all business and the reason why I didn't even know when we got back to the hotel he came up to me and said oh Spencer the knowledge like thanks for thanks for the breakdown and, and, your, and your kind words I didn't even know he was. Mm. Cause he looked totally different to like he looks like nothing. No disrespect, because you don't fight like you're nothing. So he's a really good signing for MTK Global. Um Wells a good signing for MTK Global. Um I, I like the Sterling and Aziz fight. Um and I thought it was a very, very it was a good thing for i am known um his trainer, uh, Sterling's trainer, and um, Brian Lawrence for a very long time. And sometimes Brian lets ego and pride get the better of him. So for him to do a compassionate thing like that and to throw the mm -hmm. towel in, I got to give him all the ratings in the world. Uh, I got to give him all the ratings in the world to, to go and do that because he was on a hide into nothing to tell you the honest truth. Uh, and it's no shame. It's just like, I was listening to the commentary and um, and listening, when I, when I was listening, I was seeing, uh, was it Stedman saying like, Alex Stedman saying like, oh well, this will kind of end the rivalries like them guys being from South London. Um, I'm sorry, Al, oh, you're my guy, yeah? Because, you know what I mean, you're my guy. I remember you uh, doing commentary for my shows like 10 years ago. Bruv, I'm just telling you 
it's not going to stop there because yeah. South London's a very cruel place and they're going to be giving it to Sterling. But if they go, South London's got any sense, the barber shops and all those kind of places where we frequent, you know what I mean? I'm saying like we got to give love to Sterling because he tried his, he tried, he fought with everything yeah. inside of him. But Dan Aziz is a very sneaky kind of. 80s looking fighter you know what I mean There's a little bit of Marvin Hagler in him mm -hmm. how he throws those screw shots uh, and how he, he methodically paces you down his left hook he doesn't look like he's putting much effort in his left yeah, hook but he's but heavy thugs, handed yeah, thugs, he's a very yeah. heavy handed guy uh, so I've got to big him up and what I'd like to see and maybe MTK Global could do this because Shekhan Peters now is the British champion right I would like to see a, a final eliminator between Aziz and uh, Craig Richards that is the fight because I know Craig Richards very well uh, I know Aziz very well that's the fight that I'd like to see and I also got a big up Aziz's trainer in Brian O'Shennessy very very good trainer very underrated mm -hmm. trainer uh, and somebody somebody like Aziz that is Brian's style of fighting he, he's that methodical break you down kind of guy so yeah uh, I enjoyed the show yesterday and it was a total honour to, to, to be up on ESPN because I was getting people from America while the show was on sending me sending me WhatsApp messages and stuff saying man yeah it's wicked that you're doing it so I'm really really grateful How did you find it then Spencer the whole throwing it over to you and break down the fights and stuff I know you're a boxer man you've been breaking down fights for longer than probably I've been, I've been in the sport myself but how I did think you find before it? you were born probably how old are you I'm 37 so you're you're 37 like, yeah I'm old for real yeah look at the, I've got grey hair in my beard you're 37 yeah I'm 10 years older than you I look so good come on oh man, man you know, that's, <laughs> It's, it's all that heavy it's, equipment it's, that you carry with IFL. It's the weather in Scotland. You know, it beats oh, us yeah. down. It yeah, yeah, yeah. Down. <laughs> yeah, you're right, mate. But nah, um, yeah, it was, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, that was the first time. You know the role's only going to extend, so I'm very, very grateful for MTK Global for phoning me and saying, Spence, you only got to do this because, like, you're running the foundation, and that's great and stuff, but everyone knows me. I, I eat, sleep, talk, boxing, day in, day out. I do it for free so it's even better when you get paid for it right and like i say to many people let your passion be your paycheck and it's all about pushing forward and being a pioneer of your future and not a prisoner of your past and and mm -hmm. that's what i'm trying to live by definitely well a fight that was uh that many people didn't think would catch fire because philip bowes and akeem s brown they do, they've got them styles that a lot of people don't think well extend to an exciting fight but last night they proved they won wrong that was an exciting fight last night for the British to come off champion between those two it was it it was an it was very difficult from like the angle that I was in because wired up I couldn't walk round properly to see the like I've seen it from the corner post in so there is no ringside mm. but that's where I was watching it from it, I didn't have a monitor that's the only thing can I get a monitor next time but I didn't get I didn't get a monitor so I couldn't I couldn't I was watching it from from the viewpoint of where I was seeing it a lot of Innocent Brown shots were missing, a lot of them. But if you're sitting by ringside, you're seeing someone throw loads of punches and then someone countering shots, like Phil was countering shots. And when I scored it by ringside, I had it a draw. Well, I watched it this morning. And when I watched it this morning, I did, I had Innis Brown winning by, by two rounds, right? So I had it 115, 113. How it was, how one judge got it, was it one, it was really wide, 116. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, I, but I don't, I don't get it, but I understand it because today, right now, I know for a fact, and I know Philip Bowser has been a little kid. I know Innes, I know Innes Brown as well, a good kid. But I know Philip right now is kicking himself because if he'd have thrown four more punches or be more busy with his jab, just pushing out his jab, he would have won that fight because the classier work came from him. But the 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 bludgeoning work rate annoyance. Mm. Uh, he he uh, he was like a he was like a mosquito in there. Like like when they come and get, when you're getting stung, he kept on constant, throwing and yeah, throwing. Yeah, yeah. So it's constant. So to the judges, not used to really judging that kind of style of fighting. They're gonna think, well, you're the one that's throwing punches, and the other guy's doing all of this like razzle dazzle and dipping and moving. But sometimes they're not gonna comprehend that. Uh, I reckon if there was American judges there, maybe it'd have been different. But the right guy did get the decision because I think that fight doesn't warrant a rematch. I'm just being real with you; it doesn't. Uh, Phil's 36 now, uh, but he's a young 36, so he can regroup. I'm a young 37. Exactly, you're a young guy, right? <laughs> so if he if if he wants to regroup, then he then he can regroup. But we shall see what he does from now because he could just say, "Oh man, I got bumped." And really and truly, he shouldn't be screaming at that. Like, oh, I got robbed. Titles are there for the taking. 
and he had the opportunity to actually take that British title to add to his Commonwealth title, and he and he didn't do it. Um, and big up, you got big up, Innes Brown, man. Well done for that, man. He's, uh, yeah, both of them two nice kids as well definitely I met them I, I met Bose a long while ago maybe five years ago at the York Hall when he fought Paul Appleby and then, I remember that yeah fight. yeah, yeah. And, then, oh, and I met Ennis Brown a couple of times but for Ennis for Akeem he's been avoided as such because of his style people think he's a negative fighter he's hard to hit and stuff like that now he's got these two belts you can throw in the IBF belt he's got as well the European belt he's got three belts that are bargaining tools now do you think he can get these bigger names domestically, the Lewis Ritzens, the Sam Maxwells and stuff like that? Well, of course too? he has, because now, now he's got that British title, I'm telling you this now, MTK Global is a power base and they're movers and shakers and it's going to be easy now for him to get uh, 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 bigger fights and him versus Ritson, it's the right time now, let mm -hmm. that fight happen. Uh, I, I remember Robbie Davis Jr. Yeah, who yeah. we're going to have him on uh, the fight is right with me and Baba Tundi Ajayi we're going to have him on later on today uh, I've watched that podcast yeah, thank you very it. much yeah. it's quite good isn't it yeah, yes, it's, yeah, it's another angle yes. yeah. so yeah I would uh, yeah that's the fight that they should be pushing Yeah. And, and, and I think that fight could happen as well so he's going to get fights now and he's only going to improve because I've seen this happen uh, Darren Hamilton who had the British title who I used to manage as soon as you won the title, it raises you. When you win titles, it raises you, mm -hmm. right? And then not only that, but then you 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 extend the work that you that you're doing in the gym. And I think with Innes with Innes Brown, what he should do is like study more and more boxing because he's very awkward. His style is very awkward, but he's lucky yesterday that Phil couldn't punch a little bit harder because he got caught with some horrible like right hooks. Mm -hmm. And if, if there was a little bit more power from, from Phil, then I reckon maybe he would have been in trouble. But in saying that, we don't know. Maybe he's just got a very good chin. But very awkward customer. And it's good that he's British champion because now he's going to get the bigger fights. So we'll see what's going to happen. I want to get your, your thoughts. I know you spoke with Raza, I believe, and broke down the Dylan White Povetkin fight and stuff like that. Your yeah. reaction to it a few weeks yeah. ago. But I just want to get... No, no, go back on that, but talk about like now that Dillian White has sort of lost that mandatory position and stuff like that. Does that open the door now, well, to push the fight between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua? Of course, even closer of course it now? does. One hundred percent, it does. Because yeah. you got to think, well, I don't really have to worry about Dillian White no more. Let Povetkin try and chase whatever he's got to chase. You know what I mean, nobody's not gonna gonna fault the fact that they're gonna sidestep Povetkin because Povetkin's uh, being a former WBA champion and he was a he was a unified challenger against Andy Joshua where he performed very gallantly in that fight until Andy Joshua stopped him so yeah of course he does right now it's like that's the fight that people want to see the fight should happen let's get the let's get that fight happening ASAP see Tyson Fury and Joshua they keep they say they want to the fight you see them on the Twitter and Instagram yeah. and stuff like that so well, it's just one of them things like why can't we see it why, as fans we're just sitting there watching going come on now just, just yeah, get it made you know, you know what it's, e it's easier said than, than done uh, I think initially um, I think when the announcements were made what are you saying big man you good Ian right show this guy this guy is the he doesn't like being on camera but there he's there he's one of the hardest workers <laughs> in, in, in boxing Ian right so I'm saying now there's no excuse that the fight can't happen. Let, let, let the fight happen. I remember when it was first muted, there was going on, yep, yep, yep. And uh, uh, Tyson Fury said that it, the fight was agreed. So now even more, it pushes it way closer. The, fight, the fight's got to happen. It has to happen. Two British fighters, undisputed with heavyweight title. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's it it's it. exactly. <laughs> that has never happened in the, in the, in the history of the game. So um, that's what I'm, I'm, I'll be very, very, very much so looking forward to that fight. Spence, I'm looking forward to doing more MTK shows with you now that I know because I would like to pick your brain off camera and talk boxing with you. Bro, when you're ready, man, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a history guy and, and I could see you on camera so you can speak about anything. Yeah. Like, I want people to realise I don't have to go to, to Wikipedia or Box Rep because when I was growing up studying boxing, there were no such things as those kind of things. People get confused. They must think, I want people to realise I'm, I'm, I'm 46 years old now. I'm not a baby. I've been yeah. in this game a very, very long time. Amateur boxer, uh, professional boxer, promoter, manager, trainer. I've done that. I've done my graph. But not only that, but the thing that I'm really interested in is the history of the sport. And I'm anybody who loves boxing, then I'm in love with you. And it should be reciprocated because the game is alive. The game is buzzing and we, we think about how the game transcends everything. And now with the, the, the high resurgence of female boxing, mm. right? 
got to big up Jonas and, and Harper. That was an incredible fight. It was very reminiscent to me. It was the female version. What are you talking about? But I'm telling you, it was the female version of um, Sugar Ray Leonard versus Wilfred Benitez. What was that? November 1979. Yeah, right? That's where they call you the knowledge. They tried to. You know who's on the undercard of that fight as well? Marvin Hagler fought Vitor Antifermo to a draw for the undisputed world middleweight crown. So yeah, anyway, it's never a story, never there you go. We'll, I'll pick your brains one day. Right, bro, but peace I'm, two fingers, man. Thank you very much, bro. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you soon, no doubt. Thank you, bro. Thank you, brother. Don't be shy, cause I, life won't bring you down too far.